Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm so excited to have Von Galt back with us. How are you doing, Von? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. How is everybody else? Oh, man, we're all hanging in there. A lot of us are excited. I know a lot of the world right now is worried about stuff, but we're just, we're kicked back. We we see the bigger picture, and we're going to get into that tonight because mm. seeing the bigger picture is really everything with this whole thing. That's what keeps you from getting stuck in the muck and all the chaos because there's so much chaos going on out there. But like we've talked about before, like you got the cogs, the little gears and the, the engine. Sometimes they look like they're going backwards and doing, you know, the opposite thing. But really, they're all moving. It's all moving in this overall momentum of forward motion, you know. So things will appear to be, you know, maybe setbacks, but they're really not that way at all. They're like uh, catalysts to help wake us up. So we're going to get all into that. So how have you been holding up uh, in your location? You're in Portland, right? Um, I'm close to Portland. I'm, I'm in the suburbs of Seattle. And, um, you know, we're, you know, different counties in our area um, are opening up at different phases, depending on um, just the infection rate of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, everybody has been kind of walking around and doing things. Some of the restaurants are opening up with precautions. And, you know, um, it's, it's not too bad. Um, but honestly, you know, the way I, I have actually kind of checked out this whole time because I've been writing the book. Mm -hmm. And um, and so when I finally got done, I you know looked at my husband and said, oh, OK, what's going on out there? And, <laughs> right. um, he said, well, we're slowly reopening and there is a um, riots going on from police battalion. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, so I kind of got a little bit into it, but then I can't really get too far into to the 3D stuff because yeah. then it's like for me it's a distraction and I can't finish the, the work I'm here to do, which is um, at this time to get this book out and use this time to, to complete 20 years of research. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I have been having um, QHHT sessions that have been very interesting. And a lot of them have been star seeds um, trying to find direction in their career path in the new energy. So a lot of um, suggestions from the Oversoul in terms of kind of um, how to transition their career path and their vision into something that can make them a, more, a better steward to earth. A kind of a, a partnership with Earth in their business, and it's kind of a win-win situation. So I'd be happy to kind of go into some some of these type of um, clients that I've been getting, and kind of what um, has been brought forth to them. And the the theme is very much the same. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of your audience members are thinking about doing similar things and just trying to figure out how do I use this new energy and the new mm -hmm. landscape that has been set. Um, to have a win-win career and also live in harmony with earth so that's awesome so maybe we should lay the groundwork and kind of talk about these new energies for those who might have stumbled across this and they don't realize they're like what are you talking about this is a bad thing isn't it you know yeah yeah so okay so um i'll just play because this is not this has been building up Mm -hmm. um, for so many people have been expecting this, but we didn't know quite how it was going to play out. But we knew something was coming, didn't we? Oh yeah, something big, <laughs> um, and something big is still coming. So let me just yeah. give. As for some some people who've seen me on the show before, this may be a repeat, but it's always good to kind of get a repeat of some critical information. Absolutely. So um, about a decade ago, around 2011 to 2012, many indigenous cultures, including traditions in Buddhism, Native American, Mayan, and many other traditional traditions around the world, they completed their awakening ceremonies. 
to close out the cycle of polarity and separation and welcome in a new higher energy of unity consciousness, which would, according to the legends that all these indigenous cultures have been waiting thousands of years to do, um, was to bring us towards the golden age of humanity towards a galactic future. Okay, now um, that's the premise that happened over a decade ago. Everybody remembers 2012. It wasn't Armageddon, it was the end of a cycle um, and the beginning of a new one. And so instead of happening instantly, all of a sudden we shift into like a new earth or a fifth dimension, it was, it was happening gradually. So um, the way that we know that the energy is changing on earth and people can feel this, is um, through what they call the Schumann resonance, okay? And the Schumann resonance is, um, is basically scientists measure kind of like the seismology of the Earth. And um, just like, like you measure TV, they measure the Schumann resonance or the heartbeat of Earth based on hertz. And typically, she's 7.83 hertz. That's her normal heartbeat. Everybody's normal at that point. But whenever she has a spike, she'll go up to 20, 30, 40, 50, 160. I've, I've seen it to 160 during the mm -hmm. pandemic. Um, yep. Crazy numbers. And it kind of goes in cycles. But basically what's happening is just this is kind of how you can get the analogy. It's like if you were shopping for a TV, okay, if you are – Looking at an older TV model, it's going to be maybe 60 hertz, a, a slower frame TV. So the picture quality is very slow. You can catch the nuances and the differences. But if you upgrade to a brand new TV that has faster pixels, faster frames, it, the image refreshes so much faster, it's going to go up to 120 to 160 hertz. Okay? So that's kind of how you can get the analogy and understand um, the Schumann resonance and how Earth is increasing her energy and vibration to higher, better picture quality, um, better reality, because mm -hmm. she's increasing her hertz. Mm -hmm. And they've already proven this in science. And so whenever she has these big spikes, people oftentimes will um, have kind of heart palpitations, they can't sleep, the back hurts, you know. Just something out of the ordinary um, because the biggest magnet on earth is earth herself and it's going to affect all the animals that live on her because they could feel the energy so it's just like we're like animals that can tell as a herd that an, an earthquake is going to happen or a tsunami or something animals in the wild can feel this and they start retreating and they start getting anxiety your dog can understand this Humans do the same thing. And that and so we are very connected to the consciousness and the heartbeat of Earth. So this has been predicted. So Earth is slowly going to the fifth dimension. She's going to higher energies. And what that means is we're going in away from the energy of polarity and separation, and we're going into the energy of unity consciousness, where we see the oneness in each other and we see the oneness with our environment and with earth. She's not, she's actually a living, breathing being and she's moving whether you like it or not. And if you're ready or not, it's almost too late. So they've already proven this in science that it only takes 1% of humanity to um, meditate to affect the other 99% of humanity because they are radiating at a higher frequency and the picture quality in their, in their mind is much faster, much higher. So they've done this in meditation research um, where they studied the EEG brain scans of Buddhist monks, Christian monks and nuns and all these different people who have spent their lifetime meditating and found that these people radiate at a gamma brainwave frequency. And that's the highest frequency that we know so far. And a gamma brainwave frequency is 
up to 120 or more hertz. So it's a brand new picture quality. It's a brand new TV screen. And so um, the picture makers are people who are living and radiating gamma. You're just experiencing the picture quality that they and Earth is projecting. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, the thing that is interesting is that there is a split between the old Earth and the new Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people just are not going to be able to catch up to that frequency. And it's just happening gradually. So people are still giving time to work out their issues. But as it happens more, you're going to have less and less time to work out those repressed issues that are holding down your frequency into that lower hertz. Okay. The people who are already there, this pandemic was a very easy thing for them to transition through. Mm -hmm. um, for others, it has brought up a lot of issues. So what they found in science was studying the Schumann resonance is that whenever the earth does a spike um, up the, a high level, it just, for some reason in humanity's history, it brings up issues. People who are very negative, who have repressed issues or anything else like that, is going to bring up all those dense issues and traumas and energies. At the same time, people who are very creative, very positive, very um, optimistic, it's going to bring up everything that they already are. It's going to bring up all of them. But because many of these people don't really have any skeletons in their closet and their issues have been addressed, there's nothing negative to bring up to resolve. So it's just going to bring up more positive. So you have more positive things happening as well as negative things being brought up so you can work on it, transmute it, and get to the other side so you can be there with everybody else going forward. Mm -hmm. And it's an opportunity. It's really an opportunity. So um, that's kind of what uh, that's kind of what is happening right now. It's a wonderful opportunity, too, because for so many people, they wanted to do something and they had excuses of why they couldn't do it. Maybe they didn't have enough time. I know there's people that start in gardens and doing all sorts of stuff that they put off. They didn't have time or writing a book because they didn't have time. But now they have the time. So it's wonderful to see so many people take it, take this as an opportunity because the actual COVID thing hasn't really affected many people. You know, it's the lockdown that has like more. In fact, you know, with just the the effects of the actual uh, COVID itself, it doesn't even really uh, amount to what you would even define as a pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the far reaching part of this is our response to it rather than the actual virus, which is kind of funny because it's a pandemic, but only because of our response to it. But it's a, it's been a good thing for a lot of people, you know. Yeah, a, a lot of people. I mean, they. I mean, and. I mean, I myself in my personal life have you know been affected as well. We don't have childcare because those you know the school canceled early, mm -hmm. um, so you know everybody's been affected by it. There's there's no one who's not going to be affected by co the coronavirus of 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. um, and you know there are a couple of things that we can really take from pandemics in history that we you know can take and kind of mirror, um, you know. There we had the Spanish flu, we had polio, we had smallpox in Americas. Those pandemics change history. Obviously, smallpox in America has wiped out a whole indigenous civilization, a very big amount of it, unfortunately. Yeah. And it changed the traje trajectory of America. Polio, um, you know, changed people quite a bit while it was really active, the Spanish flu. But, you know, I have an interesting story about polio. Um, my husband's grandmother told me, um, and there was a lot of parallels to kind of raising my daughter at this time, where, whereas she was raising my father's mother during the polio epidemic. And during the polio epidemic, she had said when she was alive that um, it was very difficult, very difficult for her to, especially when it first came out, to... Um, prevent her daughter from going out and playing with everybody, um, from going to the, the swimming pools, from going to movie theaters, because she was a very active little girl. And so until they found out more, um, when it first kind of 
was a thing that was a very big struggle that her and her husband had had. And I completely understand that. Um, because my daughter likes to play with everybody. And one of the things that she missed the most was to play with other friends. So she missed her friends. And we were supposed to go to Disneyland, but we said that Disneyland right now is um, shut down because some people got are sick and they have to all hi- hibernate in their castles. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they have to sing their songs and, and wait it out, just like we are. Right. So and then she's, like, she's like, okay, well, maybe next year we'll go. But um, well, during the polio epidemic, my husband's, grandmother um you know eventually they reopened everybody went back to their lives with with some precautions um until the vaccine came out and hopefully there was a vaccine for that one but um her his grandfather would get phone calls because he volunteered would get phone calls in the middle of the night and then he would get up and meet other men at the military base to go pick up iron, um, those iron machines, the iron lungs. And then they will pick them up at the military base and drop them off at whatever hospital in the two or three counties that we live close to, um, to put them there because they had expected an iron lung for a child that was affected by polio. And um, and this happened quite often, and and it, it happened for years until um, until that epidemic was finally resolved. So imagine going through that um, um, for years, huh? For years, he would get up in the middle of the night, two in the morning, one in the morning, four in the morning, and still go to work at the paper mill um, at six in the morning. Go and pick up these iron lungs, haul them in with the other men go to whatever hospital was waiting for an iron lung because some child had, had contracted polio wow. and nobody knew which child was. So everybody who had a child under five was um, scared because they didn't know that much about it. Right. So um, the thing that we learn with pandemics in history is that um, viruses, they do have a shelf life. Okay, the Spanish flu is not here. Um, smallpox, you know, we, we, we've overcome that. So viruses have a shelf life and coronavirus will have a shelf life. And I, I kind of had a feeling it's kind of getting there really quickly. Um, also, viruses have absolutely no affiliations to anything. Okay, so um, you got to keep that in mind as well. So you know, I know everybody could do and live the reality however they want, but history tells us that it's always good with something new, with a new virus that is hit until we learn more, to be a little bit precautious and is only temporary. Mm-hmm. So, um, especially if you're in an area that's really heavily hit. So that's just kind of a word of wisdom from um, my husband's grandmother when she was going through polio, when she was going through the Spanish flu, um and any of the other pandemics that she had gone through so you know the great generation that has gotten through so many things right. so yeah so those those are some things that we can take in history and then the other thing is there are silver linings with all of this as well so before i want to get to the silver linings um because that was going to go into the, the meditation technique that i want to kind of practice everybody is that there are things if you, if you take away the news about the coronavirus or the news about current affairs, there are things that are happening on earth that you probably don't know is happening. And um, you're probably glossing over it to go look at the bad news bears. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> I know everybody's doing this. Um, I don't want the bad news. It's more exciting. I don't need the good news. Why do we do that as humans? You know, I, I was like checking out the algorithm on YouTube and I was like, look, they're pushing fear. And then I realized I'm like, they're not pushing the fear in here. It's like, that's what attracts people. They like, oh, that looks scary. And they, they click on it. So I don't know. I think a lot of it we're doing to ourselves and we're going to get into ourselves. that. <laughs> we are. We are. We're doing it to ourselves. And you know, it's funny because, um, Rick Hansen, he's a doctor. Um, he wrote a book called Buddha's brain. Mm-hmm. And um, in the book, and I, I watch a lot of his lectures. Um, is actually in some of his research that he did that he uncovered from all the meditation research is also in my book Buddhist Mandalas. But in that book, um, 
we humans actually are programmed to naturally look at negative things to naturally look at the worst news because it's a survival mechanism yeah. is how our brain has is wired is to mm-hmm. see like really bad events really horrible horrific scenes and then memorize that pain so that we don't do that mm-hmm. kind of a, a warning so and it's the way that we survive. It's like, oh no, we're not going to go to that watering hole. I saw what happened to those animals. You right. know, we're not going to go <laughs> there. Exactly right. I saw that happen to to those people who ran off the cliff. So, and and then we tell those stories. We tell those those, those horror stories over and over again as um, as warnings. Don't don't do this. So we're actually programmed to look for those negative things. However, those negative things also hurt us um, chemically because they bring down um, our immunity because all the negative stuff, um, it takes like five or, or more positive things to get rid of one negative thing. And that's why you, everybody remembers like that horrible experience, but they have a hard time remembering all the positive things. Um, and so oftentimes you, in order to deal with something negative or something that's perceived as negative, you have to focus on all the things that you're grateful for, all the positive things, all the silver linings, because that's how much overwhelming good news you need to reset this monkey brain that is naturally going to go to the the bad news bears as a um, human instinct to protect us from doing harm to ourselves. Yeah. So, um, but the other thing also um, in that research that I wrote about also is that they actually tested this out on a bunch of dogs and they tested the brains of dogs and they compared it to the EEG machine um, studies on meditation practitioners. And what they found um, with studying people's brains and dogs' brains is again, we're all wired very much the same to protect yourself, survival at all costs. But um, what they found with dogs is they did this invisible, and you probably see this in your life, they did this invisible fence, electric fence, and they had the dogs go through it, kind of cruel, the, through the electrical fence, and it zinged them just a little bit. It didn't hurt that much, but just a little zing. The dogs that were in this experiment were so shocked by that little zing of the electric fence that it... It was such a memor- muscle memory for them that they remember that pain. And so then in the next series of experiments with the same dogs, they tried to put the dogs over the fence. It was not turned on. The dogs refused to go. They walked over it to show the dogs that you can walk over the fence. There's nothing wrong. They put other dogs over to walking over the fence. The dogs still didn't care. And so the only way they could get the dogs in the experiment to do what was best for them to get to the other side where the food and the toys were is to drag them by the collar, whimpering and screaming over the fence (laughs) to the other side. And when they got to the other side and they finally got through that, they're like, Oh, okay. And they just started eating their food and toys and everything else. And so what they found in science experiments with Buddha's brain in these type of experiments is people are much the same. Meaning, the things that are good for you, you're not necessarily, very few people are, but most people are wired to keep doing the things that hurt them instead of crossing over to the fence to do the things that are good for them because they are so afraid of um, the unknown. They're so afraid of um, being hurt. And so they just stick with what they know, even if it's bad for them. And so um, what a, a way to see the pandemic as a silver lining is that the pandemic is that electric fence that is no longer there. And we are the dogs that have to be pulled over to the other side, okay? And that's kind of that's kind of an analogy of what needed to happen with humanity because yeah. there's so many chances 
and we didn't do it. And so the hand is being forced. You know, that reminds me, <clears throat> excuse me, of the one where, they, uh, where they'll tie up a, an elephant with just a, a small rope from the time it's so small and it never tries to ever break it again. So they don't have to put a chain around it or something when it gets big because they just assume they can't break the rope since they couldn't break it from the time they were small. And it's that same thing. I think a lot of times we, we're bound and we feel way more bound than we actually are. We can just move, make any sort of movement whatsoever and watch those, you know, binds fall away, basically. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. So, um, the, you know, and we're going to talk about you know, the silver linings of what we are all going through and what we are coming out of. Um, but what is happening to Earth? So for the people who are like, what, what, what was happening to Earth that I missed since I was stuck on Bad News Bears? <laughs> um, and I, I have to tell you, Shane, um, I really want to go back to the Berenstein of the E Bears reality because the Berenstein Bears of the A kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone on that one. <laughs> the Berenstain Bears. But okay, so we're in the Berenstain Bears. Um, but what's happening to Earth? So this whole time during the pandemic, um, and as we're coming out of it as well, the Schumann resonance has gone crazy. It, it has just gone crazy. It has, I mean, it, you know, from 7.83, it went to, you know, we used to think, you know, 30, oh my God, it hit 30, that's crazy. It, it, oh, it hit 20 for the first time, that's crazy. Years ago, you know, everybody was going, wow, that is so amazing. It never did anything for a very long time. All of a sudden it hits 30 and now it hits 60. Well, now it's hitting 120, now it's hitting 160. And it's like, how far, you know, it's the pandemic in terms of the Schumann resonance, and how many leaps Earth is taking in her energy. She's taking, like I said this in previous um, interviews, um, she has enough people who are gonna support her that she's taking leaps. She's not taking baby steps anymore. She's not doing 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 60 hertz. She's taking leaps. So she's going 7.83, 60, 80, 120, 160. She's going there. She's going there. And it's just driving everybody nuts. <laughs> But even that's even that's an opportunity, right? For the yeah. meditation, you know. Exactly. So it's you know it's we really so we really need a little bit of challenge, but she's definitely really going there, and she's going to keep going there, um, because there because what's happening to her right now, you can look this up in science, okay? Um, again, as she makes those leaps, the and en the energy, the higher energy is forcing everybody to deal with the issues. If you don't deal with your issues, you repress issues with your character, with your life, with all the things that you've, you sweep underneath the rug, it is going to come up in these higher energies because there is no good or bad in these higher energies. It's just basically in a higher level. So it just brings all the gunk up um, so it can move forward. And so if you don't deal with it, it will take you down with it. Okay, that's for confidence. So really, there's so much help out there um, and, and definitely use it. And as we've seen with going through this pandemic, so many people are like, just call us if you need somebody to talk to. We'll do free counseling. There's this this board, there's that board. I mean, so many people are coming out to help people with mental health and dealing at this time. Um, and it will stay that way. So that's really good. Um, the other thing is off the coast of California, um, well, since 1999, there was 5,000 holes in the ocean off the coast of California that opened up. But during the pandemic, now there's 15,000 holes what? in the ocean off of the coast of California. And they're, they're really big. They're big holes in the ocean. Um, and they all open up. Um, they're about, I can't remember exactly how many meters they are. Um, but they all opened up exactly the same distance from each other. Like some kind of grid of holes under the water? And like how big, how big in diameter are these? Are they like miles or just meters? In size? Meter, meters. 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 I, I can't, I, I didn't write down, but um, some are like 30 feet, some okay. are wider, but they're all the same distance from each other. 
and they're all opening up. And the reason why we know it's off the coast of California is because it's not that deep. We don't know if there's more holes that are opening up in deep waters or in other parts of the world where there's not that much visibility. So are they thinking it's like sinkholes, but under the water? Yeah, that meth. There's no methane that's coming out of it, so they just started to investigate it. There's no methane that's coming out of it, that's but so you know, it is very strange. Earth is doing some interesting things. Um, I'm going to say that maybe Earth is getting a a, a mask and maybe a face show, and she maybe she's <laughs> maybe she decided, I'm going to get rid of some of the really bad. Um, <laughs> I let out some steam and some air. Maybe she's lighting up her grid. I don't. I don't quite know and scientists don't quite know what this all means either but um you guys can go and look it up off the coast of california there's fifteen thousand mysterious holes in the ocean floor um and they're long and they're the same exact distance which is very interesting um another thing that's happened is the the north pole is continuing to shift and it, it shifted a little bit more during the pandemic from from Canada to Siberia. So, mm-hmm. okay. So, um, you know, whenever, I mean, w- whenever the earth changes her frequency up to a higher frequency, we all get a little bit anxiety because the energy is changing. But also you have to understand that let's just consider your house is slowly moving, how you're going to feel living in that house. Well, that's what's going on at the same time as well. So right. our home is shifting a little bit, which means that um, the environment is going to shift as well as the weather, mm-hmm. depending on where in that radius you are. So I'm not a geologist, but um, you guys can all look that up. But the, the pole shift is moving towards Siberia. Yeah, and it's actually speeding up. Mm-hmm. And there's actually been proof of that the trees are beginning to respond differently, like in Washington. And so you probably heard of that up in that area or whatever. But yeah, yeah, things are already starting to respond to it. And a lot of people think it's a Mandela effect. I'm not really sure, but I know we used to have a like a polar ice cap, a North Pole, which mm-hmm. we don't anymore. So I don't know where Santa yeah. is. I guess he's in a submarine or a boat or something, a yacht or something at the North Pole. Yeah, when I. I totally agree with you. When I was a child, I mean, I remember uh, in, you know, in geology class, there was the ice caps and you, you can see it on the globe, the North mm-hmm. Pole and the South Pole, they just took a big chunk of the earth. Right. And now it's like, there's like hardly any, anything there. So, yeah. And they would even warn us that one day it's going to melt and we're going to have too much water, but now clearly it's melted and we don't have too much water. I don't know. Maybe it was a Mandela yeah. effect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say, you know, I always try to find silver linings because I know there's no accidents in everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and every time I do a regression in a QHHT session, um, it's always proven a reason for why everything happens. So um, just like, you know, when, when a woman gives birth, it's always scary. And the mm-hmm. process of giving birth is not this pristine, perfect thing that you imagine on TV, it can be a little messy, but then you, when you come out of it, you're so happy you did because you have this beautiful child. So, right. um, you know, it's kind of consider like we're kind of, we're kind of in that process. So anyways, I don't know if those 15,000 mysterious holes off the coast of um, the California ocean may be taking in the water. Right. Where maybe, would they're, go? Maybe, maybe they're teleporting out cylinders of land, you know, like covertly. They're like, we need to get this out so the water doesn't rise. And we have no idea they're doing all this behind the scenes, you know. Yeah, we don't know. I mean, we don't even know anything about the core of the I earth. Have no idea. We no. have no idea. About we're the- just guessing. <laughs> yeah. And and we're, we're learning more, but we don't know about the core of the earth. We don't know what's below, you know, below the surface level of the ocean. And so when you have holes in land yeah. the water has to go somewhere yeah so maybe it maybe that's where all the melted ice water is going i don't yeah. know totally. we'll, we'll find out but um, <laughs> that's interesting as well and then the other thing that's interesting that's happened that's happened during the pandemic and it may have happened before but um more so is that there's the south atlantic anomaly around this around um south america is a very large, weak magnetic spot where mm-hmm. the Earth ozone is very weak, and we get radiation coming through that. 
and it's grown bigger in proportion over the years. Well, the interesting thing that happened during the pandemic that was brought to my attention, um, and maybe it happened before, but then it became more obvious um, during the pandemic, is that big hole in the ozone layer that is not as um, strong um, is now split into two. There's two. It's split into two. So what does the, so in terms of like the silver lining, I'm like, well, what is that? That basically was a positive way of seeing that. And the way I see it is typically when you have one big hole um, and it's growing, it, it's going to kind of take in more. It's going to accelerate. It's going to build on itself. But if you if all of a sudden it turns in and splits off into two, now you have two holes and maybe it's easier to fix. Right, maybe it's starting to close up. I know. I know they've said we've had uh, an improvement in smog and stuff like that since less people are driving. So I, I would expect this hole to get smaller down there. And you know, and it's funny because when you're when you're raised in school, they're like the ozone's getting depleted; it can't rebuild itself. Where, where did they get that from? Where did they get that it's not going to rebuild itself? And we see just in a matter of weeks, you can begin to see it's already repairing itself. It's like so yeah. much of what I was taught is not even true. And it's like you find out more and more, like every year of your life, you're like, well, that wasn't even true, you know? Yeah, we're finding out more about ourselves <laughs> and about our planet all the time. But, um, you know, the South Atlantic anomaly is now two anomalies. And the hope is that as Earth repairs herself and hopefully we become more a green society, Earth can repair those two holes completely and then we will have a good strong um, ozone to protect mm -hmm. us from the radiation of the sun. So I see it as a, a good thing. Yeah, me too. Right? I see it as a good thing. And there is a, um, we have new satellite images of a black hole in the space that... <laughs> All of a sudden, we're able to get more because it's supposedly closer. It's still far away, but supposedly closer to um, to our space. And if we have a stronger ozone layer protecting us, then we may not be as um, easily pulled in or susceptible. Right? Mm. And that's something that, like, when I when I was doing QHHT sessions in December, one of the reasons why I was um, decided to do these type of interviews was in my sessions, I had gotten, um, you know, Metatron, the Overso, and, and different beings on the other side saying, um, we need to, we need something big, something big is going to happen to wake people up because um, they need to change their ways because this, this black hole is going to suck in everything, including the planet. And um, we're not going to be able to get people out in time. So, um, so what we've gone through, I think, was possibly a positive thing to kind of save us from an alternate outcome. Hmm. It could have been so much worse. Right. So, and the other thing that's been happening also outside of mainstream um, news is NASA discovered parallel realities. <laughs> I've heard <laughs> something about that. I didn't check into it very well, but yeah, I did see something. Yeah. So NASA did an experiment, um, and I, I didn't read too much into the experiment, but I got a basic glimpse. But they, they did an experiment, and what they found is when they were doing the experiment that um, some elements we're moving up in gravity instead of down. And in our reality, gravity moves everything down. But they mm -hmm. found that elements were moving up. And so they're like, how is that mo moving up? And so they drew the conclusion that if atoms or elements in space is moving up, that means it's, on, it's existing in a parallel reality where the gravity goes up. Wow. Because all gravity in our reality goes down that we know of. Right. So they found, again, another piece of evidence that there are parallel realities existing at the same exact time. Yeah. That's wild. 
Yeah. So, like, I, I don't know. How could that benefit somebody from jumping into that one? I guess if you're falling off a building or something, you're like, <laughs> try to shift into the reality where up is down and down is up or something. And catch yeah, yourself. Well, maybe, maybe. I don't know. We'll find, <laughs> we'll find out how that one works. Gotta be a, there's got to be a benefit to that, but I'll think about that one. That's cool, though, that that they discovered yeah. it that way. Maybe somehow we can, like, I don't know, tap into it and then start flying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we can tap into the up element and put it on our skateboards, and then we can start skateboarding in the air. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, that, that's so true. I never thought of that. If you could learn to, like, willingly jump into that alternative kind of uh, grab reality, it. you could just use it to fly and float around. Yeah, there was a movie called, I think, Upside Down or something like that, where it, it, it was like two different realities. One was our reality, another one, everything was up. Right. And um, and so the, the reality in, in our reality that where gravity went down, um, somebody was able to harness some kind of plant from the up world and right. they put it on things and it will make everything um, the gravity change. So they put it in beauty products and everybody will look young and all these different mm -hmm. things. Um, so I don't know. We, we can we can definitely speculate, but um, we are definitely learning more about parallel realities, and this was something again that we're finding out in the higher dimensions. So um, so let's take a look at like meditation techniques. So what what are some you know kind of, as we're kind of going through this, um, and we're still going through this, and we're kind of coming around the turning the corner. Um, there's a lot of different outcomes for how you can experience um, the ending of the pandemic. And I'm not sure about you, but I've had so many, I stopped counting, I've had so many um, Mandela effects throughout the whole last three, four months of this. Oh, pandemic. yeah. So many. Yeah. No yeah, one. Yeah. No mm -hmm. one. Um, I, have, I have enjoyed the lectures that Jane Goodall has been giving mm -hmm. about, um, you know, how to take care of the earth um, after this pandemic and all that. And, and, and that's nice. Cause I, I remember the reality where she passed away. So it's nice to have her back <laughs> right. and, and doing what she does best. Um, but, but yeah, there's, I've had a lot, I, you know, I spent many years telling people, um, I know Ed McMahon did the publisher's clearing house, um, winning prize prize van because my dad was, all about that and there was a big thing about that and now um you know he, he did a rap song <laughs> about wanting to get some money from the publisher's clearing house and the, the mm -hmm. van so now that's been proven um correct so now you have that existing at the same time yeah so i mean there's a lot of just those kind of mandela effects i've also taken in my personal life i've taken pictures of shrubbery around my neighborhood that I know um, were missing big chunks of foliage and now it's full and then I took a picture when it was empty and it's like okay it's the same shrubbery so if anybody knows about hedges like you know mm -hmm. those, um, those wall hedges that people grow um, when huge check sections die off mm -hmm. many years later oftentimes they don't grow back in right. and don't replenish. Yeah. So I have experiences where I see these neighborhood um, hedge fences where the huge sections are completely barren and then all of a sudden the same sections are completely full. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, so I, every time I, I do see some kind of discrepancy, I take a picture so um so that I, I can go back and take a look and kind of compare and contrast but yeah. sometimes i can't find my pictures so i don't know why so i always use my husband as a barometer he's like oh yeah those were those were empty oh i remember that too he's like i, I noticed that i thought it was really weird so well, most of the time most of the times i find that the picture will either be gone like it never existed or the picture will change because i've had people like they they were like oh i got a picture that store back before the sign changed and they'll pull up the picture but it looks like it was that way at the time they took the picture, right. but it wasn't, you know? Yes. It's like the picture changes. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The only th exactly. The residual is just people who's like, yeah. I don't, I remember, I remember yeah. that. That's, That's why you'll find it in like uh, tattoos or artwork where, you know, the human consciousness is introduced to it because now you're going off someone's memory or someone 
performing a cover song of a, a song that's been changed. Well, they've memorized it the right way. Now it's changed. So, yeah, so they bring that residual evidence of the old. And, of course, people that don't see it says, oh, you're just confused. That's why you're confused is because they've been singing it wrong. <laughs> well, it's those, a double-edged sword, isn't it? <laughs> right. Those people exist in this current parallel reality. They didn't jump from the last one. So it's okay. Right. You know, parallel right, right. people, they're parallel people. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and so, and I write that in my book, um, Buddhist Mandalas, about parallel people. And actually, I think that's a great segue. Before we actually do the meditation, I'd like to show this book cover. Uh, here, let me share my screen. Because this is beautiful, beautiful artwork here. Let me go back here and bring it up here. Look at this. Absolutely beautiful. So, yeah. this book is, uh, tell us about this book, Bye. Yeah, so this is the book um, that I wrote during the pandemic. And, um, you know, whenever the Schumann resonance does a spike, I'm like, oh boy, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> because I have, um, I have, again, all my repressed issues are, are worked on and, and transmuted. So what I have is basically more abundance. So my challenge at these type of of times is to balance all the positivity, all the abundance, all the creativity. And my husband has the same challenge as well. So our house has just been a beacon of creativity uh, throughout this whole time. And it, and again, it's our meditation. So um, the artwork you hear, you have here is beautiful Fima Buddha and Bodhisattva Kuan Yin. She's a Chinese, um, ancient Chinese um, Fima Buddha. And, um, she appears in times where there's a lot of healing that has to be done. So um, she actually brought a lot of um, visibility to the Bodhisattva hood, which in Buddhism means somebody who um, is about to cross over, but they hear the legions of suffering of humanity. And so they decide to turn back and help humanity little further out of um, suffering. So they come back to help people um, get a little bit more insight into the secret, into ascension and awakening, and just kind of help relieve suffering a little bit more. So um, Kuan Yin is very, very popular for doing that. And she oftentimes, again, reveals herself when you're in times of need and transition. So right now it's perfect. Oh, uh, it is perfect. This artwork is just so stunning. I know. It's, it's beautiful. And so a little bit more about this artwork. Um, this is done by my, um, my artist, Fabiana Trevi, in Milan, Italy. And so she was drawing this for me during, um, she started like a week or so before the pandemic started in Milan, Italy, and then the pandemic happened and, and she was channeling all the frustration and the anxiety and the worry into her artwork. And it, um, it really helped her heal a lot of the anxiety and stress about um, the coronavirus possibly affecting her family members and her, her senior family members at the time. Mm -hmm. So for her, it, it did help her um, focus and shift her energy into a creative pursuit that was meditative for her. Um, and she came out with a beautiful piece of art, um, and I just love it. And it's basically a Buddhist mandala. So when you read the book, you understand um, kind of what I went over in the last interview, explaining a little insight on sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. That's the vision of what a Buddhist mandala will look like. And of course, um, the back in the back cover, I have a picture of me, and my son. And my I daughter, <laughs> yeah, my daughter was like, oh, where's my book? I said, I already did your book. You were the last Buddhism book. And so now <laughs> my brother needs his own book. And so she's like, okay, fine. The next book have my picture in it. So <laughs> um, so they, they're going to take turns. So all my Buddhism books are probably end up having my children in it. So because um, they think it's their books. Right. Um, so. <laughs> but that's awesome though that's awesome yeah but anyways but that's that's the book cover um actually if you go into amazon the ebook is available on amazon in the next two three days i just submitted it 
and um, and people can go and, and pick up the ebook if you search for it. You should be able to find it and download it. Um, and it's very affordable. The ebook's only ten dollars. And then in the next couple of weeks, um, the print version will come out. So we'll the next time we we do this, well, everything will finally be published. But right now, it's still really fresh, so I don't really know the time frames of when things are published. But if you keep checking in there, you'll you'll see it in there as well. Yeah. So down below where I have uh, Vaughn's author page, that will take them to the page, and it should just pop up on there when it's ready, right? Exactly. So right now it's in review. Um, it, I, there's so many synchronicities with this book. It's very interesting, too, and I write it in the book. Um, and a lot of people can kind of argue, well, synchronicity, I don't know how valid it is. Da, 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 da. Um, when I started this journey of writing, this is book one of three, when I started this journey, um, I was just interested in sacred geometry because I love the artwork from my Buddhist art history, uh, studying Buddhist mandalas over my lifetime, uh, being raised in the tradition. So I would just, when I would see interesting information, I would just study the science behind like Buddhist brain, meditation, consciousness, whatever. And as I was done with one piece of research, another person with a, a completely different topic separate, like a fringe topic on something else, would bring out some information. And so I would literally read one piece of information one at a time, it would just pop up for me. I would walk into the library and something would just catch my eye, I'll grab it. I would look over, over the author, see that they're part of um, some kind of fringe research science go look up that page, really search, and then find the interesting information. And so um, it was like I was led one at a time from one piece of research to another. And over the course of 20 years, it all came together to explain the scientific understanding behind um, Buddhist mandalas and how to explore parallel realities using sacred geometry. And so when you go through the book, you are actually reading article per article and evidence per evidence of how it was delivered to me over the course of 20 years. Very nice. So um, so there was, um, I in my dedication, I dedicate to my family, but I also dedicate to um, the energy of Metatron, Kuan Yin, and Yeshua. Um, because every time I would read information, there would be some kind of symbol around it that had um, a reference to Sega Geometry, which is Metatron, or Kuan Yin, which is under the cover, um, something that relates to her, or Yeshua, something that relates to Yeshua. And so it would be like I would be reading a book in a library or picking up an article, and there would be maybe a, um, an advertisement for some kind of meditation that have Kuan Yin's image on it, or you know, some kind of display ad would come up, and it would have something that re that's relevant to um, sacred geometry, and, and the story just goes on and on and on. And um, and even when I finished this book, I was so ready to be done with it. I was like, I'm gonna need I need a big break. I'm ready to be done with it. Um, one of the images was off centered. So I was like, oh no, I, I want to be done. So I went to fix that one image, which is Tara, which is the mother of um, the Buddhas. And she is the mother of liberation. And so I fixed her image, I resized it perfectly. And so then when I resized it, I ended up resizing all the other images correctly so that don't have alignment issues. And it changed the page number to 399. And 399 is an angel number, which means to let go of the things that no longer serve you. Oh, how perfect is that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's just so much synchronicity with this book. Um, and so, you know, if you have some synchronicities about something you're going through for like a year or two years, imagine 20 years of this stuff. Okay. <laughs> it gets a little bit... Um, it gets exhausting. <laughs> so, and even when I woke up, I woke up Sunday night because um, I had 46 pages left to proofread before I was able to get it completely done and submit it. And I woke up Sunday night at 8, I'm sorry, Sunday morning at 8.46 a.m. And 8 
is the infinity symbol for um, the universe. And 46 was the exact number of pages I had left to proofread before it was done. So it was like, I woke up in the universe and said, get up girl, you're gonna finish your 46 pages and you're gonna get it out there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was really and, funny. And don't take forever to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So, um, it, you know, if, yeah. So, if you ask to be a service, sometimes um, you know they they will come through in different ways. And and because I'm I'm not interested in being like a channel or anything else. And you know, I just want to be Vaughn. I want to do my thing. I want to live my life. Um, so you're gonna have to be creative in how you utilize me as a resource. And and they have been very creative. So I've been <laughs> well, using the synchronicity. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I love that too because it's like the more you pay attention, the more you realize that you're always getting little signs and synchronicities. It's just we normally aren't paying much attention, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, so this is this is a perfect segue into, um, you know, meditation technique. Yeah, how do we transition to the fifth dimensional energy that has come up and is going to continue to come up and become the norm? Okay, how do we make this energy normal to us? So, um, you know, one of the things, first of all, is, you know, we always want to pay our respects to those who did not make it. Okay, because, um, and I've, I've had clients come in and, and they want to do sessions to speak to people who have been affected by the coronavirus, um, you know, either it was fatal for them or they had um, a really bad experience recovering for, from it, um, or they just want to know. And um, what's always shown is that it is part of their plan and um, it had a purpose in their life for some reason or another. It's always made shown, made available to them to see. So, you know, we always want to um, pay our respects to those people who um, have uh, not made it through as positively as maybe some of us have because um, it is a it is a tough experience mm -hmm. the other thing also in order to pay those respects is to move forward and um, move forward in a positive way so that their suffering and their um, closure of a chapter in their life was not in vain Okay, so um, what when it when it comes to the other side and the spirit world, it's always about grace. So how do you do these transitions in grace? Okay, and um, one of the, the ways in which we could do it is with meditation. So a lot of people think that meditation is um, you know the normal idea of meditation, or you have all these different techniques that you could do, but really. The, the definition of meditation, it's anything that is going to stop the monkey mind from thinking. And it's going to change your brain waves um, from beta, which is, you know, we're kind of in test mode, to gamma. Okay. And gamma is the highest frequency in the brain that we know so far that people can get in meditation. And it is those high frequencies, kind of like when Earth and her Schumann resonance goes up to 120 or 160 or more um, hertz, gamma also goes up in those hertz as well. And they gamma, like I said earlier, is typically reached by a lot of monks and nuns who meditate a lot and focus on um, reaching those high levels of their consciousness. So we could all do this and some techniques that everybody can do to get to either alpha, which is where you can reset the programming in your personal life or gamma in which you can reset the greater reality mm -hmm. um, based on what you contribute to it. But basically some of the things that you could do that is active meditation is um, you can do art, you can do music, um, you can do gardening, you can go on the nature trails. Any kind of exercise 
in which when you're doing um, that activity, you are not thinking about anything. You are just thinking about, oh, I'm going to plant these carrots, dig, 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 put the carrots in, water it. You're not, you're not thinking about, your monkey right. mind is not thinking about um, what's all going on in the news, what do you have to do at work, How all these different things that you have to do. And that's when you know you shifted your brain away from this constant thinking process to a brainwave that is kind of empty. And when you're in that empty state is when you are emitting those higher frequencies, okay? Mm -hmm. Another way to get into gamma brainwaves, it sounds so simple, but being grateful. They found this in science. When you are grateful for something, Mm -hmm. and you list the things that you're in gratitude for, your brain has no choice but to change to gamma brain waves. So what they found, the same thing in, in, in research in Buddha's brain is you have monks and nuns who are meditating and reaching gamma, but then you can also have meditation practitioners and participants that just sit there and think about the things they're grateful for, and they get the same results. Wow. They get the same result. Okay, so... And that's really one of those things where no matter where you are, no matter how bad things are, it can always be worse. So you could always be grateful. Even if your kid's sick, you can be like, well, I'm, I'm so glad my other kid's not sick, or that I'm healthy enough to take care of my, my child right now, or whatever it is. I mean, there's always, it could always be worse, right? And you can always be thankful that it's not worse, right? That's exactly right. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking down meditation so that it's not so um, fringe and mystical. Mm -hmm. You know, however way gets you to that frequency and works for you, that that's what works. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at some silver linings. How do we have silver linings with what we all just went through? Um, And the interesting thing with the pandemic is we as a global society went through it together and everybody, wherever you are in the world and whichever country you are, um, handle it slightly different, and they had different elements to handle as well. But we still went through it together. So, I mean, that's unity consciousness, okay? Mm-hmm. And as we were going through this, we were helping each other. It brought up a lot of things that we didn't want to look at for a very long time, mm-hmm. unfortunately. And the unfortunate thing is when energies force you to deal with things that you've been repressing for so long, um, it's, it's not the most pleasant experience, but you have, you have you got to, that right. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to work through it. So let's go through some of these silver linings and try to find a way to, um, to have gratitude for how to see this. So let's take a look at the pandemic. So what the pandemic has done, we all know the different things, but let's take an example of corporations. Many corporations, um, especially in the United States, have mishandled their employee trust, okay, in so many different ways. And there are so many good people that work in a lot of different industries and corporations who do good work and try to do the very best to deliver quality service and um, kind of, you know, help everybody out. But maybe the system is a little bit corrupt. Maybe um, the processes that have been set up, the foundation is so dense and so complex, it's really hard to really get down there and reset everything. So what the pandemic did was force the hand of corporations to go, if you care about your employees, you are going to treat them with respect and you're going to take care of their welfare. Okay, a lot of companies had to go virtual. A lot of companies had to um, really instill uh, some protocols for the safety of their employees. And you saw companies also that didn't care. And it showed right there. So it just really, again, human effects. 
it's just polarizing. It's just really polarized what you are. It's just bringing everything up to go, is this who you are? Is this who you want to be? Is this the character you want to carry on? Because it's going to get worse if you don't deal with it. So I haven't changed my, my tune. It's the same exact thing. So what it did was bring corporations up to go, we need you to be integrous. If you want to exist successfully in the fifth dimension, you have to be integrous. You have to be transparent, and you're going to have to fix some things. So we're going to force your hand. So that that was interesting as well to see that happen. It's almost like a reset button was, was pushed with corporations. Another thing that it brought up for everybody to see is governments around the world reacted differently to how they handled the pandemic with the citizens. And you got to see which governments came through and which governments had gridlock, which government had um, political back and forth, um, which governments worked together. You got to see it. It brought everything up so yeah. that you can deal with it and you can fix it. And again, um, the layers are, and the infrastructure was so complex that so you have good guys and bad guys and, and so how do you deal with a, such a complex situation without hurting innocent people, mm -hmm. you know, who just in, you know, are trying to do the best that they can with a bad hand. So what this did was reset the governments. And it really has, just think about it, it, it reset the governments. And so what didn't work fell apart. What still has good foundation and bones are still intact and they're re rebuilding it and you know building off from it. So um, that's some way to see that there's a silver lining with that as well. Um, another thing to be grateful for about this, another way to look at it is, um, especially in our country, Shane, um, Work-life balance is such a struggle as different areas of the country are so expensive to live in. And both parents have to work two jobs or both parents have to work. Some parents have to work two jobs, some even three jobs in order to just make ends meet. And so there is definitely a work-life balance and a missing of that family structure for the children. Um, everybody's overscheduled, um, they just spread thin. And it's just, it's just, it's a mess. So, um, so no, so how do we solve that situation? How do we solve that situation? And again, just like the other situations, so much layers, um, so many, you know, everybody's stuck in so many different places and they just don't know how to get out. So what happened with the pandemic is a lot of companies went virtual and realized that they can still function and be profitable virtual. Mm -hmm. And um, and by doing that, again, it helps clean up the air and the earth because people weren't commuting as much. Mm -hmm. And it, it allowed a lot of families to have that work-life balance. So now they're like, huh, I, um, I didn't know it could be like this. I didn't know that we can still work like this and it would work out better. So it kind of forced the hand mm -hmm. to have a work-life balance for most families. Um, another thing that I look at, cause I look at kind of, oh, how would this work with earth? So crime is, re I, crime is very interesting at this time because most people didn't really go out that much cause there's no restaurants and, you know, dense areas and things to do. Um, I watched a really funny, um, coverage on gangsters in America. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and what I thought was really funny was that, um, like cocaine dealers were easily caught by police because there was not as much activity going on. So they had to pose as like pizza delivery drivers and other things. So it was really easy to just kind of find them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, um, and so there isn't, isn't as much trafficking trafficking because they can't um, hide under the cover of all the busyness of right. if not everybody's out. I bet. Yeah. Yep. And then the other thing I found interesting is some of the inner city areas that have really, really bad gangster um, conflicts going on uh, because of the demand of food bank and lack of supplies and food at the time of the pandemic, 
um, many gangsters in really um, crime-ridden inner city areas started to create um, food packages and help aids uh, and care packets to give to people in their neighborhood who, who were struggling to survive during this time. So instead of gang banging, they started to, to reach out and help take care of their of the people that they were, you know, tormenting through all their crime that they were doing. So they kind of shifted. Yeah. So it, it's very interesting because it like it brought up these issues and it forced their hand. Are you this way or are you this way? Are you willing to sacrifice your whole neighborhood for your means or are you going to help them? Exactly. And a lot of the gangsters decide to help the neighborhood. So I thought I found that very interesting. I was like, huh. <laughs> that gets back at the heart of, of, of how, the, how a catalyst actually works and how it can push somebody that's normally doing something negative into doing something positive, you know? Yeah, it was funny because I was watching. I was watching this. Um, I was watching this one gangster. And he had the, the bandana on, so you could see him. He's like, I typically uh, would sell crack to this kid and so, so forth. But now they're really struggling, so now I just give them food. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, you know, I have my guys go and do their runs to make sure there's enough care packages for everybody to get what they need so they can survive this. So it was just really, really fun. It was like. Mm. You're not very good after all. I have oh, that. you have a heart under all that toughness, right? <laughs> so that's that was interesting. So crime has their hand has been forced through this pandemic, and um, some of them, um, you know, came up actually have some character. The other thing that was interesting is food production. Okay, um, every, a lot of people have watched a lot of documentaries, and I've watched a lot of documentaries over the years about just sanitation with food. And with this pandemic that we've gone through and closing out on, it has um, forced the hand and forced um, like meat producers to to put um, safety precautions in how you know, how they manufacture meat and how they manufacture food. It's also put um, a lot of inform a lot of um, attention on migrant workers and treating them fair and respectfully so that they because they're essential workers. So all these essential workers in the food industry who have been taken advantage of and nobody really cares for for the most part, now that they're essential and they're needed for your survival they're getting the respect and the care and the attention they need. And I hope that stays because um, it's a good thing to have good sanitation around food production. And it's a good thing to treat your employees um, that are essential workers with respect and um, with care because without them, you wouldn't have the luxuries that you have. So that's a silver lining to be grateful for that mm -hmm. maybe moving forward, we can carry on, um, that higher level integrity in how we um, manage the food industry and the people that work in in these industries. Um, you know, one 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 thing I wanted to add to that while while we're talking about it is, so many of uh, these ideas, these silver linings, will come to you if you just turn the TV off for a little bit and just sit quietly and just meditate and just sort of getting get into observer mode. Mm -hmm. That's where I've seen so many good things that, you know, I've considered coming out of this whole thing. And, you know, it just comes to you. But you have to turn the TV off because that's like this constant loop of fear and the world is coming to an end in horribleness, you know? That's not even true. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, um, and and remember, just like when we started out this, this, uh, this show interview, you have to be almost overwhelmed with positive information to get over the negative information that our brains and our you know our survival instincts naturally gravitate to just to prevent us from hurting ourselves so right. you know, we're constantly fighting that that um that reptilian brain of ours that just naturally moves there but right. the other thing another silver lining that i and i, and I can go on with this but i have a couple more um what we're dealing with right now with the george Floyd riots, okay? Um, I, I honestly, personally, I can't stomach watching this stuff, but some people can. And the whole thing, again, is a repressed issue 
especially in our country, that we've had for a very, very long time. And now that we're in the higher dimension and higher energies, we're doing it as a unified front. So instead of isolated pockets and cities that have um, rioting and looting, it's like um, this unified energy that kind of goes through all the, the, the different areas. I noticed that. And they, they've tried to focus on what looks like uh, purely divided by race, but you can't hide the fact that you see people of every race and color out there taking a stand for equal rights and, you know, just humanity, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, Basically. Yeah. And, you know, I actually had a conversation with um, an anarchist about the, the, the methods. Um, and, 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 I, and I had this Facebook chat conversation. I was like, why do you guys do the violent thing, why? why? And, um, you know, the perspective I didn't necessarily agree with, but I'm like, um, okay, so at some point you're gonna have to move on beyond that, okay? Because every, everything is getting reset. So now it's time to put your big boy pants on mm-hmm. and start doing some rebuilding work, okay? So all the damage that has been done to businesses are being cleaned up by children and their parents walking through the neighborhoods cleaning all the mess with everybody else has volunteered to clean up. So you have children cleaning up your mess and I think it's time for you to grow up too. So so that's what I'm gonna say about the the anarchists that kind of hide in these myths to Mm -hmm. take the opportunity to get out their aggression. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's the thing that we have to keep under taking it back to is when we look at these silver linings, um, like the, the, the riots, um, it has come up because it was not resolved. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have not found a way to resolve this and it will continue to come up, but it will come up in a different way in that we are going to start because there's no right or wrong way of, of, of everything is just going to come up for you to resolve, um, positive or negative, and we've seen this over and over again, it's going to come up in a unified manner. So if you don't want a unified destruction, because that's the high energies, everything's unified, then we need to really start dealing and addressing these issues. Because the opposite of a unified manner of writing is a unified manner in which we work together and uh, we're more positive in how we do things. And there's also a positive way to do this as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I don't know what that's going to look like. And I just kind of watch and observe. But it's it's come up for us to address. And more issues will come up for us to address. But the thing that you're going to start noticing that's different is the response is going to be more unified. Because that's the energy of unity consciousness. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, so in a, in a in a silver lining kind of way, with the current riots is going on in different cities, um, is an opportunity for us to hopefully finally resolve it so that it doesn't come up again. I'm, I'm, I'm giving hope for that. Um, another thing is healthcare. Um, healthcare has become virtual. You know, out of this, a lot of hospitals and clinics have offered virtual options, which means that um, it, it's much easier, more accessible. A lot of people came through and came back into the healthcare system to offer themselves. Um, if there was overflow in the hospital, 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 the hospital system, and so um, this is, you know. A lot of positive things came through that transform healthcare, and hopefully for the better. So now we can have care because we're, it's being offered virtually, and it's being spread out in a lot of different ways through technology that we never did before. But now, because of demand and supply during the pandemic, it forced our hand to make it available to everyone um, as much as possible, and the virtual option came out. And so I think it's going to go more that way as well. So you're going to have a kind of a hybrid. Um, the other thing also that I noticed that came out that's a silver lining is relationships. And, and if you were in a relationship that was good, it, will, it got better during the pandemic. If you were in a relationship that was not good for you, it got worse. 
Okay. Now remember the, the, the fifth dimensional energies and whenever the Schumann and the earth does her spikes, she's just a magnet. Okay. She has no pain or good or bad. She's just a magnet. And all she does is amplify what you already are, what's already existing in your life. She's just digging the dirt and bringing it up for you. Okay. So if you got dirt, it's going to come up. If you don't got dirt, but you just got a lot of positive energy, all that's going to come up. Whatever you are, it's going to come up for you to address. So like I said earlier, for me, I'm like, oh, here it goes. Lots of creative energy. I'm going to be doing some so doing some stuff. Um, mm -hmm. For other people who is, on, who is not in a happy relationship or in a relationship, relationship that they're stuck in, it, it brought up the issues in that relationship for them to deal with. If they don't deal with it, it will um, it will harm them. Especially if they were using work to get away from them. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, oh, gosh, I'm stuck at home with them 24-7. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. my God. This is the worst. <laughs> even, for, even for parents or for family relationships, if you have bad relationships in your family, it brought that out even more. It made apparent the things that you were hiding behind for a long time and now – it forced your hand as a parent, as a spouse, as a boyfriend, girlfriend, as whatever your relationship title is, uh, it forced your hand to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. And um, luckily there was, there is still a lot of people who offer assistance to help people that at, the, at this time, a lot of people were, you know, Hey, if you have mental health issues, you need to talk to somebody, marriage counseling, a, a lot of marriage counselors and divorce lawyers were called, upon at this during the pandemic um i had a friend who's a divorce lawyer and she's like i'm so busy right now i don't i don't know what's going on and it's oh, like no. <laughs> relationships that were dealing with bad with a divorce for a long time finally go i had enough i'm done when this is over with i'm moving on i'm not gonna stay, stay stuck in this anymore so um so that so she's like this has been really <laughs> she's like i'm more busy now they're ever. thinking, hmm, I'm going to bring the social distancing into the home a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. It was just, it was, just, it was interesting. So, and you know, um, it's it's funny too because the pen, like my my little sister, she's an essential worker. Of her room, her roommates are all essential workers and college students, and they're living paycheck to paycheck, and um, and they're like, thank you, coronavirus, for the stimulus checks. <laughs> um, and the unemployment and the, uh, the, the, the bonus to the unemployment, because now we have in nice lump sums, first, last and deposit to move into a much bigger house out of our very small apartment. So yeah. they would never have been able because they were living paycheck to paycheck. They were never able to save enough um, thousands and thousands <clears throat> of dollars to make that move. And so they moved from a two bedroom house, all four of them, to a five bedroom house. They have two dogs. So uh, four people, two dogs in a two bedroom house. They moved to a five bedroom house with a huge yard. Um, the land, the, the homeowner is a very nice landlord. And they, because of this event, they were able to get the income to move out and also um, their jobs as essential employees. Um, is now valuable and they were getting treated better from their employees and from the customers. And when they go and they make deliveries or, um, or anything that they do, they're saying, thank you so much. It's like, Oh my God. I appreciate it. Right. Right. That's so funny because that, that, that's a great point because a lot of people are really appreciating people now. I mean, even from your waitress to the clerk at, at the local convenience store, you know, you realize how important it is that they're there because, you know, as, as so many people go away and you're like, wow, you're like, you know, I, we really depend on you to be here right now, whether it's the, the person at the local store, you know, the clerk, I know that, you know, a lot of them get freaked out and they're like, I don't know if I want to go and put myself at risk. And so they have to overcome that fear to go out and do that. And I think a, a lot of people really are learning to appreciate these people they typically overlook. That's mm -hmm. so important to our everyday life. Yeah. You know, and, and one other thing I want to add to this, because 
what you just explained came to me in meditation. It was shown to me in meditation, like there's so many people right now that were about to get evicted that they put a hold on. Now, I know that's a little different. This is a little bit more dire situation than what you were just ex explaining. Mm -hmm. But there's people that maybe they lost their job. Maybe they were about to get evicted. They put a hold on that. They got the stimulus money. They were able to get back on their feet as a result of it. So there's so many little things like that that has helped people. And, you know, so easily we can focus on the bad stuff because that's all the news talks about, you know, yeah. but if you turn it off and tap into the inner, that inner, uh, you know, consciousness that will let, you know, all of this is working out for the good. It's yeah. And, and, and it, and it is, it's, it's like, it's like I said earlier, it's like we're giving birth to a new world. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be painful, but it's beautiful. Gonna be painful <laughs> and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to suck and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be lots of different things. Right. Sacrifice. But once it's all over, you know, it's like, you know, same same way with a baby being born. You're so captivated by the beauty of what is birth, right? That you're you don't even think about the pain and the sacrifice. That was nominal or minimal, you know. Exactly, exactly. So I've I've spoken to so many people in different areas who are like, you know, when I look at the silver linings, Vaughn, um I got a divorce, but I've been waiting on the divorce for 10 years. I've been <laughs> miserable. And thank you, coronavirus. I got rid of that guy. Right. You know, I, I talked to my sister and her friend. They're like, we've been bunkered down in this apartment because we couldn't afford anything beyond that. But thank you, coronavirus. We got this awesome house. Right. It was like a two-year lease. This is great. And the guy just loves us. And we love him. And he's hanging out on our barbecues with us. And I'm like, okay. I talked to, um, you know, the the gal that takes care of my children while I work. Um, and she's just like, I could never have gotten the money saved up to pay for my custody um, for my child to get more time with my child because um, she's going to the custody battle. She's like, I would never have afford um, all that. And now with all this, you know, because I'm on because she's on unemployment and all these other things as well. Um, she's able to afford to do that. So something that she could, because she was living pay, paycheck to paycheck. So um, so she could not afford to do that for years. And then the coronavirus came in and all of a sudden do all these different things that are happening um, that were sad. Yes, yeah, she lost her job and yes, yeah, she's on unemployment and then this and this. But now all of a sudden she has the money to get the lawyer she needs for her custody battle, which she's been waiting five years to try to piece a little bit at a time to get and the the carrot keeps moving so she's like thank you coronavirus <laughs> okay so i mean there's more and more cases of that and i will say also on the flip side there are there are sad things that are happening too and um i mean i'm not partial to it either i've had i've had to lose my child care and my husband and I had to, you know, while we can't have a, our child care come to the house, had to, you know, do some sacrifices as well. Um, you know, my husband's not playing any music live anymore because they cancel all that. So all 60 shows that he plays, he plays like a thousand people every weekend are all canceled. So that's a lot of income that we are missing. So, you know, we are experiencing, so everybody's being touched, but, oh, yeah. um, but, it will, on the other side, as we come out the other side, you know, what you have to understand is as as terrible as the things that we're going through and things, more pandemics will come down the road, more tough situations will come down the road. But if we have gotten through this together and we've helped each other, and the more we can look at the big picture for a very long time, Many, many people were praying and meditating, you know, how do we fix corporate corruption? How do we fix the um, the ozone layer? How do we fix pollution? How do we fix, um, you know, bad relationships and marriages, bad parent parents? How do we fix this healthcare system? All the, how do we fix crime? All these lists that we have and been praying for for a very long time because the, the issues are so complex and so layered that we don't, you know, you can send good people, but the system is so complex and um, messy that it's really hard to fix. So how do you fix it? Well, 
coronavirus came by and reset everything mm -hmm. and no one is to to blame you know it was mother nature that came through so earth for really us right yeah. it, wasn't it us wanting it so badly and putting our intentions into it so much that we've really brought this about and if we can get beyond the apparent you know the appearances of it being this horrible negative thing you can look deeper and see how beautiful it is and how many things are working out and yeah. of course there's sacrifices and our heart goes out to those people that sacrifice and have had to make larger sacrifices we've all sacrificed something on some level you know, and we're grateful for those who have sacrificed more. But on the other hand, there's so many people that's waking up to what's going on in the bigger picture yeah. and the possibilities. You know? Exactly, exactly. And I was speaking to, I was speaking to a gentleman um, who was in the generation that my husband's um, great grandmother or grandmother came from, and um, he's still alive. And he was saying, you know what, you kids should be grateful that you have unemployment to complain about, that you have social security to complain about, because when we had to go through this, we had nothing. Because yeah. we went through the Great Depression, the pandemic, all the challenges that we did in the early 1900s, we created those safeguards that you're complaining about not working perfectly during mm -hmm. this time in your pandemic. Yeah. So be grateful for the generation that set this up for you to complain about. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, a lot of us, a lot of us were actually, uh, I know my wife and uh, other people that work in the food industry were actually making more sitting at home than they would have going in. So we were able to catch up on a lot of bills and it's, so it's actually been better financially for us. Um, you know, and I know it's like that for a lot of people, you know, because I don't really have any income. So for her to get that extra, I think it was like 600 or something, it was like more than she made anyway. Yeah, you know? so, the, the, the bonus. The bonus. Yeah, it was crazy. So we were able to get caught up on stuff. It's been truly a blessing. You know, I haven't really had to worry about anything coming in. And um, yeah. so I don't have any complaints. I'm, I'm yeah. really thankful. Exactly. I'm really thankful. And then the, the gentleman that I talked to, the senior gentleman that I talked to, he said, you know what, and stop being stop being guilty about using the stuff that you paid into. <laughs> so right. you said, I paid into it my whole life. You paid into it. Stop being guilty about it. That's what they're for. Right. So it's not going to last forever, but that's what they're for. And, and people even talking about it like, uh, we'll never recover from this. I'm like, hey, even if we have to tear it down and start something new again, you know, if it's, you know, wrecked it beyond repair fine we'll start something new maybe then that means it was time to restructure the financial system right exactly. so however it works out is going to work out perfectly is what exactly I feel like. we gotta we have to um what's that saying let go let god let jesus or whatever right right let, Buddha, let go it's mm -hmm. it's the first um noble truth actually the second noble truth which your attachment is your, the cause of your suffering so let go of your attachment to the systems that did not serve you. Okay, you're not happy. Let's be honest, you're not happy. You never were happy. Mm -hmm. So let go of how that transpired. Whatever is left over after this is completely done, we can just kind of like when you flip a home, sometimes you have to tear it completely down because the rot, the root is rotted and everything, the foundation is bad. Some homes, some projects, you can take it down to the bones and you can build it out. Some projects, it just needs a little, you know, makeover in the kitchen. So, you know, the same thing with all these different infrastructures and systems mm -hmm. in our society that has really been given a reset. Mm -hmm. um, Even the education system, look how they're oh, having to redo the schools and everything. It's like, dude, yeah. we need it. We need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the education system. I don't know how all this is going to look, but... Um, you know, remember, we're working on things as a, a, a unified consciousness, as a unified society. So when we're looking at fixing the education system, we're looking at how these people are doing it in this country, how these people are doing it in this country. So we're having a bigger palette to choose from to how we want to do it. So we've been given an opportunity that doesn't come around very often. We've been given a reset button and in everything. And whatever, wherever that area that you are working in or that you are experiencing, you're given the opportunity to rebuild it better. 
So maybe some of the foundation is fixable and you just fix some of the foundation. Maybe some of it is it's just too complicated. You start brand new. Whatever the situation is, you're given the opportunity to make it better. So it's time to pick up the, the tools that you have been training on for the, your life and time to build it the way you want. And so build it in a way that it's not gonna cut corners, that's not going to um, be malicious. Build it in a way that has integrity so that if something comes through, it'll stay strong, mm -hmm. okay? So like um, in all of my interviews before, I always talk about integrity, having integrity, consciousness, et cetera, et cetera. I actually wrote two books business books on um you know have integrity because you are going to have that life review mm -hmm. okay and everybody who went through this journey with us and maybe chose um to be violent or chose to be harmful or hurtful they're going to have those life reviews okay so um you know everybody's getting the lesson that they are going to get and they're going to get the parallel reality that is a matching frequency to them um but for many of us that are here, um, we're here to go through the shift and then to build it better. So what does building it better mean? Okay, because um, you got to do the work, okay? No one's going to do it for you. So you wanted a reset button, you wanted a do-over. Maybe you got it, okay? <laughs> and now it's time to move on and, you know, put your thinking caps on and your big boy pants on and, you know, get to work. So, um, and work with everybody. So like in medicine, for instance, like let's say you work in medicine, um, you know, you can utilize some of the things that we learned from the coronavirus and have it be virtual. You also saw the things that didn't work and now you can address those as well. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can make it better. Um, if you work in careers, and I work in IT, and one of the things in IT, like I work in the automotive industry, and I taught during this time, I pivoted very quickly and taught a lot of um, my clients how to do virtual phone calls. And they weren't really familiar with it, but taught a lot of, a lot of new technology to them. So people can have that opportunity so that they don't lose any um, you know, possible sales from that because they couldn't see customers in person anymore. So taking that forward, they're even more flexible, more versatile. So in IT, instead of spending all of our beautiful brain energy on stupid apps, because <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing valuable to do, we actually now can use that beautiful, cohesive, algorithms and brain energy to build um, technology that is going to help all these different areas that have been shown to us need some kind of fusion with technology. Medicine needs virtual. Um, a lot of companies need some kind of virtual aspect of it. Schools need some virtual aspect of it in case some something like this happens that they need to have some flexibility. So now IT has been called to step it up and be integrous with the type of stuff that you make because your skills are needed in all these other industries. So there's opportunities there. Um, schools, we saw with schools where the holes and the potholes were and what could be fixed. So now, you know, teachers and, and everybody in that industry is looking at different ways to make it better. Um, we have seen with food and the food industry, how to make that better as well. So there's there's all these different things that have come up for us that have been reset, and it is up to you to build that um, that golden age of humanity. Okay, it's up for you to move forward with integrity and build something that is going to, you know, that's actually going to stand. The reason why the systems did not stand through the pandemic was because they were faulty, okay? It's like a lot of the systems were kind of jerry-rigged, you know, like kind of like a house where you add a room here, you convert this, you kind of, you know, put some band-aids on it. 
And then a storm came through and it blew the whole thing down because it wasn't strong. But the houses that were built correctly with integrity, with good materials, with good ingenuity, they stood. Okay, that's what this opportunity is for humanity. Okay, we're given the opportunity to build it better and right. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe that we can do that. Absolutely. And in meditation, of course, we do this every Saturday night with meditation, but using some of these ideas about, you know, focusing on the silver lining and really, you know, they say getting your emotions and your feeling into your meditation, uh, into your intentions really helps bring about faster manifestation. So I think that's probably why the silver lining um, tip will help so many people because you get into the emotion of feeling things getting better and feeling businesses getting more integrous, as you're saying, and feeling people uh, being more compassionate towards others. So tapping into that. And then what's the other, where do you go from there? Do you just focus on the silver lining in this meditation or do you? Well, you know, if you just focus on silver linings in tough situations, like how can I turn this into a positive? How can I take this as a stepping stone into something something better, you know, this bad experience and turn into something where I am growing out of it. Um, as long as you see the silver linings and you see the things that you can be grateful for, the more that you think that way and see the bigger picture, the more your brain will get into the gamma wave frequency. So instead of meditating here and there, you're a walking meditation. Right. It's sort of walking with that attitude of gratitude all the time. And that keeps you in that high vibe all the time, right? So you know, can, can we can, can we do something together to, as a uh, as a group here? Because I know we're running out of time, but I wanted to have time to do something just at least short. Maybe walk us through something okay. that we can do um, to give people an idea, and then yes. we can use our power of intention together as a group. Yes. yes. To, okay. So um, there's a really easy um, strategy. It actually comes from the um, Vedas of Hinduism that also um, transitions into Buddhism that they use the same strategy. But basically, your brain cannot think two thoughts at the same time. You cannot think, you can't look at this and this and think at the same time. You just can't. It's just not mm -hmm. possible. Okay. Your brain functions much like a computer. It can only have one thought at a time. Okay? Even fast computers do one command at a time. So the fastest way to get to that zero state in your brain where you have that blankness that people will do a lot of meditation to get to that blankness where the, the brain stops thinking. Mm -hmm. is to focus on what you're thinking about right now. And when you're focusing, like right now, I'm looking at you on the computer screen and that's what I'm thinking in my head. Now I'm going to turn back and look at what I'm thinking in my head. And by l reflecting and looking at what you're thinking in your head, you instantly wipe away the thought. Okay, you could do this anytime. You just wipe away the thought. And when you get that moment where all of a sudden your brain is empty, then you're in that zero point and then you can hold on to it and put a new image. And the new image is the outcome that you want to happen. And then you focus on that outcome. And that is a very quick meditation that you can do anytime you want. Um, and the more that you do that um, and you focus on the outcome, that is the intention that you're having that you're sending out into the universe and it will come back to you as well. How and you can that, stay in that state where you're constantly projecting that out and constantly bringing in that manifestation even quicker. And the more of us that do it, the quicker it's going to bring it about, uh, about yeah. in a consensus reality sort of way, right? right? So let's just, so everybody just uh, think about what you're thinking at right now. Okay. Go ahead and close your eyes. Close your eyes. Shane, everybody close their eyes. And think about your thoughts right now. What are you thinking about right now? Okay. And then as you're refocusing on what you're thinking about, you're going to get that moment where there's a blank thought. So hold on to that moment of blank emptiness in your brain. Now put in there how you want this outcome to work for you and your family. Just put in the image, whatever the image is. Put in that 
empty space the outcome that you want this to turn out. And if it helps, you can put your tongue on top of your um, the roof of your mouth. That will help you kind of tune in. I really feel that. And that's it. I like that. So simple. You don't need to spend two hours or three hours or anything else. It's so simple. And then, of course, you can practice. You can be a walking meditation. Just look at the silver linings all day long. Be a walking meditation. And oftentimes, if you're a walking meditation, you'll be surprised. You'll get free things all the time, too. So <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that, too. Yeah so, yeah. so for me, I've been doing this conscious breathing thing where I um, just take it, you know, because breathing's automatic and it's sort of like you, you take the steering wheel again of your mind. And like you're, you're, you're saying, um, so often we relate with the voices in the head instead of being the observer. And as soon as you pop back and you begin to observe, then you're not thinking the thought anymore. You're watching the voices or you're observing the thoughts right. and, and you, then you can let go of them. Right. You, in that act of observing the reality instead of being part of the reality you yeah. have stepped out of the ego yeah. yep you separated you separated from your ego your individual ego that's constantly thinking and trying to survive and you've stepped into the the energy of the universal consciousness that resides in everybody and it's it's a hum it's a yeah the hum. And, and with yeah. that, I breathe that in. I breathe in that perfection, you know, because it's it's perfect. It's blissful. It's the perfect energy. It's just that we take it and we distort it and we color it and all that. But if you can take that step out of out of the ego and then you're the perfect receiver for that pure energy and you can breathe it in and it just you can feel your vibration raise. Oh, you know? yeah. And you feel like there's no anxiety too. just feel it. Just keep doing that. And it's a, such easy meditation. I always try to make easy things so easy. For mm -hmm. people, and then if you find other things that um, kind of get you into that meditative energy, do that as well, like art and music. But speaking of music, I sent you a link. So my husband has been doing streaming shows with his co 80s cover band, Nightwave. And on July 12th and 13th, they have a Facebook Live um, streaming free show. Um, and Shane will put the Facebook um, Live link on the description. But he actually created this teaser video to kind of get the word out as well. So he's been doing a lot of music. This is meditation during the pandemic. So if you can play that really quick, and then I'll, I want to leave your, your audience with a last message from the, um, the universe that I get from my QHHT clients. Okay, you want me to play the, uh, let me see here. It's the YouTube link that I sent you. If you, if you could okay. bring that on the screen and play it. Okay, I do have it linked below for anybody watching later. If you want to watch it, let me pull it up here and we'll watch it together. Okay. Okay. And then I will share it for hey, you one second. Let me bring you into it. Oops. Okay, let me share my screen. You won't be able to hear it, but you'll be able to see it. Oh, you won't be able to hear? Oh. No, 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 you won't be able to. Oh, Everyone else will. <laughs> well, everybody else will okay yeah because of the feedback if it's trying to send it to you so let me go to here okay make sure you guys can hear it huh let me pull it up on the screen for you guys okay hey everybody evan from nightwave here we wanted to invite you to our first ever live streaming shows june 12 and june 13 you might be hearing some gems like these.
Yeah, he had, he had a great time. So that's what that's his meditation. So he makes a lot of these kind of stuff, and they've been doing Facebook Live. But yeah, just tech, tune in and have some fun. Um, the last message I want to give to everybody that I try to you know let everybody know that I get from my QHHT sessions, mm -hmm. I always get some kind of message like this um, for the client, and so I want to relay it to you guys. So the last message from the universal consciousness that resides in everything and everyone is this you've always been enough use the gifts and resources all around you to create a life that you want to experience a life full of joy and love the spirit world will nudge you through syn synchronicity and you can do it so that message is even more prevalent now than before. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vaughn. And yeah. you guys check out our links below. Check out her book that's going to be coming out in a few days. And we'll, we'll have you back really soon. Yeah, the next the next time we, we do it, we'll probably, um, the book will definitely be out. So see you Okay. Happens. We plan for the end of June or maybe the beginning of, uh, beginning of July, around the 4th or something maybe? Um, like a 4th of July celebration? Maybe not on the 4th, but around the beginning of July sometime. We'll um, talk about it, though, I guess. Yeah, we can talk about it. Let me take a look at the calendar. Okay. Well, I'm going to say goodbye to our viewers watching live. Thank you guys so much for joining, and be sure to check out those links. And I'm going to for sure tune into the, the live show. That looks exciting, the, uh, your uh, husband's band or whatever. So this is really cool. You can watch the video I put down below, as well as the uh, Facebook link that will get us to the actual concert. And it's the 16th, is it? Um, it's the... The 12th and the 13th. The 12th and the 13th. The, yeah, the first one is Duran Duran and Billy Idol covers. And then the 13th of June is um, just 80s covers. So you have... Oh, party songs and stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. We all love 80s music, so that's going to be great. So we'll make it a big party and show up over there. <laughs> that would be fun. That's awesome. So thank you so much, Vaughn. Thank you guys so much. Lots of love, light, and unity to each and every one of you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Be sure to check out the website at uotf.net. There you will find the live stream schedule displayed in your local time right there on the front page. Below that, you'll find links to take the Beyond Quantum Healing course at a discounted rate, purchase our book Mandela Effect Friend or Foe in paperback or ebook, or to contact me to schedule a BQH session. At the top of the site, you'll find links to help support the work I do. Access the free private forum where you can discuss organizing get-togethers in your area, Mandela effects, and more. Thank you all so much for being here.